businesses are starting to address climate change and especially inspiring example is Microsoft who one year ago published their commitment to become carbon negative by 2030. Even this announcement for us at Climeworks was a huge help and uh, for the whole emerging industry and specialists around the world praised it for its boldness and for being a role model to other businesses. One year later, we we're very excited to be part of Climeworks Carbon Plan and we're very convinced that this will catalyze further action for establishing the carbon removal industry. So Lucas, what early progress have you made and what are you learning along the way? Well, we've learned a lot, quite quite frankly. We've set our commitments. So we're talking about carbon today, but Microsoft's committed to being a carbon negative, water positive, zero waste company that's also operating the infrastructure of what we're calling a planetary computer. And to do all of that by 2030. On carbon specifically, we have to reduce our emissions by half or more and then physically remove the rest. We've made some progress. Uh, last year, we reduced our emissions 6% and we managed to procure one and almost one and a half, 1.3 million metric tons of carbon removal, including from Climeworks. Yeah, well, tell us about the request for proposal you, you had last year where we were among the, uh, one of the applicants. How, how did you come about it? What were the key criteria for, for Microsoft to select a solution? What was your goal with setting up the RFP? Well, as you said, we set this RFP because by 2030, we have quite a lot of carbon emissions that we're going to have to remove from the atmosphere. To do that, we know that we're going to have to mature the carbon removal markets. We're going to have to mature the technologies that those, mar that those markets sit on top of. And so we issued this request for proposals calling for our or signaling our demand to purchase 1 million metric tons of CO2 removal this calendar year. And when we created that RFP, we were thinking really hard about the types of projects we wanted to see. We wanted to see projects that spanned the, the spectrum of negative emissions technologies, uh, nature-based solutions like afforestation, reforestation, all the way to engineered solutions like direct air capture. And we were really thinking about some additional requirements as well. Were these projects actually net negative when we looked across the, the whole kind of supply and value chain of the projects? What was the durability and the permanence of the sequestration that was going to happen? And then how cost effective was the solution? But I think most important for us was What's the scale potential of this solution? How far is this going to take us and society towards our 2030, 2040, and 2050 net zero goals? We chose Climeworks because it's a, such a fantastic example that one, that kind of, that end of the spectrum technology solution, direct air capture, it comes with such clarity around permanence, durability, um, and it comes with some significant scale potential. Uh, you know, we were we were a purchaser of Climeworks uh, carbon removal, but also an investor in, in a new facility in Iceland. So we're quite interested in that ability for direct air capture to scale. You know, one of the things that I think a lot about is this difference between Climeworks and direct air capture. You know, Climeworks' solution inside the direct air capture space and then direct air capture versus some of our other opportunities for, for carbon removal. And I was just wondering, Christoph, how you see your technology really complement or, or compare to other removal approaches in the market now that we've kind of seen through the RFP what else is out there? Yeah, well, I'm first and foremost, I'm very glad you, you're asking about how the solutions complement each other. I typically like to say as of 2021, in order to achieve climate targets, we must not use the word or, we must only use the word and, uh, meaning that really all approaches have to come together um, in order to master the challenge. Um, like concretely starting with CO2 reduction, which we haven't touched based on in, in our conversation, but 
like substantial CO2 reduction has to be complemented with uh, CO2 removal. And in the field of CO2 removal, really all different approaches have come together in order to jointly get to the gigaton removal as, as fast as we can. Well, for Climeworks specifically, I'd, I'd like to point out really three uh, distinct aspects, uh, where the first is that Climeworks technology is not dependent on arable land. And in such, Climeworks is really very complementary to biological solutions, which obviously need arable land. Um, we could really place our technology at sites where it's very hard to impossible to grow any plants. Like the plant we are currently constructing in Iceland, you will be, have a very hard time uh, to plant, uh, to grow plant at uh, a very distinct location. And interestingly, those locations that are not arable are, heavily, are, are mostly having vast renewable uh, resources available. And especially in the northern parts of our planet and in the sun belt uh, of, of the planet, they even overlay with great CO2 storage opportunities. Uh, and in such, we, we do have this, this sweet spot and this, this complementarity to the biological solutions. The second aspect I want to mention is that when combining direct air capture with underground storage, we can really offer a permanent way of locking away carbon from the atmosphere on very, very long timescales, even on geological timescales, like on several tens of thousands of years, the carbon is locked away, if not more. And lastly, and you already alluded to, to that aspect too, with direct air capture being a technology solution, we can learn from other technology solutions uh, that have seen massive scaling. So technology typically brings scaling opportunities with it and humanity has profited from scaling of technology solutions. And we are very confident that with our technology solutions, we can profit from, from technology learning curves, from technology scaling curves. And in such, we are also very confident that we can bring direct air capture to the much needed gigaton scale uh, that is required to achieve the climate targets. Well, as a as a customer and as an investor, uh, I'd love to hear a little bit about, you know, what 2021 looks like and, and your kind of near term scaling plans and, and how far you think you can go over the next year or so. For for 2021, we essentially have two very concrete milestones. The first is that we're currently constructing and commissioning our scaled carbon removal plant in Iceland that we're calling Orca. Orca will have a capacity to capture up to 4,000 tons of CO2 from the atmosphere by year. And in such, it'll be the largest CO2 or direct air capture and storage facility worldwide. The second aspect is that we're preparing the launch pad for our scaled plant uh, with at least an order of magnitude more capacity to go online in three years that we'll call Mammoth. Um, and uh, like generally about scaling in the past, we have scaled by roughly an order of magnitude every three years. And we are confident that we can continue this rate of scaling like an order of magnitude every three years, which will bring us to megaton removal capacity in the second half of, of this decade. And always the, the very first step uh, for scaling is to develop a market, right? And very concretely for, for this year, uh, we did developing the market for the scaled plant for mammoths through people and uh, business customers. That need for demand, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about, like, as, as I mentioned, we're, we're a customer and as, as an investor, why is it, why is it so important for people to actually be customers today when we know so much of the potential is down the road? Right. Well, businesses becoming customers is really the very first step in order to get it going. So what happened very concretely for, for, for Orca, this is like a very concrete example and, and uh, also for Mammoth uh, to, to happen, is that when first customers said, we are interested in that solution, they were really developing demand. And with this demand, we were showing to investors that they fit a, a market fit, that, that people are interested in that solution. And that gave the investors the confidence to put money on the table that at the end of the day allowed us to construct the plan, to operate it, learn from it, and from the learning, take the next step. So it's literally a spiral of implementation, uh, so to say, where always the first step is really customer interest 
that is then triggering more and in such helping us for those, as, as mentioned, like those order of magnitude jumps every three years. That's a very nice bridge. What, what we, I'd be super interested to know, Lucas, is what is your message to businesses considering purchasing carbon di dioxide removals? Well, I think my message really echoes yours, which is to start now. That's what one of the big lessons that we've learned over the past year and a half after setting our carbon negative commitment, we looked ahead to 2030 and the carbon removal demands that we'll have then. We also committed by 2050 to have removed all of the emissions associated with Microsoft's business since we were founded in 1975. So that puts another large requirement of carbon removal purchasing on us today. And our message is, is exactly yours, which is to be an active customer and consumer of carbon removal starting today to both send the demand signal to the market and also for your own organization to start learning about how these markets work and the types of you know contracts and needs that your organization might might uniquely have the second thing that i would just highlight is one that we've both already spoken about which is that removal comes after reduction and that is a critical piece of the puzzle. A lot of people want to skip ahead to the reduction side. And I would argue that it's not skipping ahead. It's in parallel. You need to be reducing carbon today and you need to be purchasing removal today as well. Thank you, Lucas, for this very nice conversation. Thank you so much. Appreciate the opportunity.